the poor student who invented Audemars Piguet. Nobody would have imagined a farmer's son as well as a poor student, who was master of his trade might turn into a brilliant watchmaker and build an empire. He showed that if you have the right skill, grit and drive, even destiny will embrace you. His visionary business is now worth millions. We're talking about the co-founder of luxury watchmaker Audemars Piguet. He is Jules Louis Audemars. So let's take a deep dive into his life and how it all started. This is the story of Jules Louis Audemars, a 24 year old boy who came from a very poor family. He had just graduated from watchmaking school and had earned fame by creating a particularly outstanding pocket watch. It possessed a perpetual calendar, dead beat seconds and a quarter repeater. He is the son of Elise Nanet, Jacquard and Francois Louis Audemars. He was from a poor farmer family in Switzerland but his ambition was sky high. Notably, he is the great nephew of famous wild watchmaker Louis Benjamin Audemars. Jules Louis Audemars completed his elementary education at Lee Brasseuse before beginning an apprenticeship as a watchmaker in La Wellie under the guidance of his father. In 1874, Jules Louis Audemars had a job in Gimmel, but he wanted to do something more. On his family property, he established a workshop in 1875 for the production of intricate blanks. At this time, he met a person with whom he started his journey to the sky and never looked back. He is Edward Piguet. After getting separated at an early young age, these two buddies ultimately managed to reunite in their early 20s to start one of the finest watch brands in history. Jules Louis Audemars formally partnered with his childhood buddy Edward August Piguet in 1875 to fulfill the requests for high end calibers coming from the renowned Geneva watchmaking firms. From an early age, Jules Louis Audemars and Edward Piguet began studying how to make watches. They were born and nurtured in Valley de Jukes, where they were raised in the proper horological tradition. This valley resides at a high altitude in the Jura Mountains. It is vulnerable to cold winds, consequently this frequently leads to bitterly cold winters. That's why the region is referred to as Switzerland's Siberia. The Swiss mountains' spectacular scenery and abundant iron and wood resources served as an inspiration to watchmakers and helped the field develop over time. The firm was established in Switzerland's Wally de Jukes and this region has a considerable impact on the watchmaking industry. This is due to the region's abundance of natural resources like iron, which were and are still crucial to the manufacture of watches. Many people think that Wally's entire population became watchmakers because of the town's harsh environment. They could cultivate throughout the summer, but they needed a method to survive the winter. Therefore, by trading or selling the goods they made using various crafting techniques, many families were able to make money throughout the winter months. Because of the region's soil and rocks abundance in iron oxide, metalworking and other associated occupations were in high demand. The ability for the watch industry to develop and flourish was made possible by the natural resources of the area, particularly the woods, water, ice, and rocks from which iron ore could be collected. The untamed beauty of this mountainous area, along with the vivid vistas of the starry night sky, continues to serve as inspiration for watchmakers today. In the late 1600s, watchmaking was first brought to the region by Huguenot immigrants. The majority of them were talented artisans and by the 16th century the valley played a substantial role in the watch business. The valley has a long history of producing high quality mechanical watches. The Audemars Piguet duo took it to another level. Even though Audemars and Piguet started working together in 1875, they didn't formally register their firm until 1881. However, because they were already leading the watch business, the pair considered 1875 as their official starting year. Both men wanted to become recognized as industry leaders in the production of complicated watches. When Audemars and Peguet was first established, the founders were still in their early 20s. Both guys already had great expertise and all the necessary abilities for their new firm. They had worked in the watch business for quite a while and hailed from families with a wrong history of watchmaking got along well since they were both childhood friends. Because they were specialists in various facets of watchmaking, their abilities were complementary. After they established their dream company, they divided their work. Technically adapted and capable of creating intricate watch movements was Audemars. He was therefore in charge of product development and production. Overall, Audemars took care of all the manufacturing related technical issues. Guay, on the other hand, was a repasseur, a skilled watchmaker who completed the watch's last adjustment. In the watch business, there was a strong demand for this post. As a result, Egwe meticulously examined each finished movement component in their new business. Additionally, he performed the necessary corrections to the component's flaws and mistakes. It was his responsibility to put the mechanism together, activate it, and start the watch. 
Although Pigway began his career at Audemars Pigway as a reprocessor, he quickly realized he was far more skilled at managing the business end of things. He took on responsibilities in sales management and marketing. Gui had to travel across several cities and then a continents to get in touch with watch aficionados. They successfully formed cooperation in this fashion. Together, they ran the business for the duration of their lives. The Audemars family is in charge of technical concerns and the Pigway family is in charge of commercial and financial aspects. This division of work is still in place today. Up until 1950s, the Audemars Pigway workshop employed less than 50 highly skilled workers. But as time went on, that number increased to over 100. The requirement to miniaturize the mechanical movements of wristwatches at the time made them difficult to manufacture and thought of them largely as women's jewelry. A total of 550 intricate wristwatches were produced by Audemars Pigway between 1892 and 1965. In only a few decades, Jules established offices in Geneva, London, Berlin, Paris, and New York while Eddie marketed high complication movements all over the world. The two men decided that the company would continue to be a family business over time, with family members Jacques Louis Audemars and Pellut Pigway rising to prominence in the third generation, and Paul Louis Audemars and Paul Edward Pigway serving at its second generations of leaders, respectively. You must keep in mind that the name Audemars Pigway had no significance at the time. It didn't indicate quality, it didn't indicate pricey, and it definitely didn't indicate the watch with eight sides. Like many other watchmakers of the day, Audemars Pigway served as an OEM manufacturer and B2B supplier to other watchmakers. They were still basically newbies doing some of the most difficult and riskiest actions ever. Thanks to the creation of women's wristwatches and ultra-thin models, the firm flourished and expanded, surviving both World War I and the Great Depression without suffering much. The company changed its structure after World War II to produce a range of watches that were easier to get. Because the business dared to introduce the Royal Oak, the first high-end sports watch in steel in 1972, the company barely suffered the effects of the watchmaking crisis in the 1970s. In the 1970s, Audemars Pigway cemented its position in watchmaking history. Audemars Pigway and other conventional watchmakers were battling to remain relevant as the quartz crisis continued to have an effect on the industry. The brand was aware that it needed to take a risk. So the managing director of the business met with renowned designer Gerald Genta on the eve of the 1972 Swiss watch show. He explained to Ganta that the business wanted to pioneer the premium sports watch sector and that they required a design to exhibit the next day. Genta's genius immediately got to work after being instantly inspired. The outcome was the famous Royal Oak. The company presently has 500 employees globally and is firmly confident in the coming days. Since its foundations, Audemars Pigway has tested out novel designs and pushed the limits of the tiniest, thinnest, and biggest watch models. Every line of timepieces has its own identity and each watch is handcrafted from start to end. Most notably, the Royal Oak watch was the first stainless steel premium sports watch when it was introduced in the 1972. With its steel case, octagonal bezel, and tapestry dial, it challenged the pre-established watchmaking conventions. The ultra-modern, Robba's design of the Royal Oak was intended to be worn every day. It was a watch for a new, more active lifestyle that was developing alongside competitive sports in the 1970s. A woman's Royal Oak variant was produced by Audemars Pigway in 1976, four years later. Royal Oak enhanced the grace and glamour of numerous celebrities. With several world record-breaking watches, Audemars Pigway continued to play a vital part in the history of watches. By 1907, the company's production facility employed more than 70 highly qualified watch specialists. The founder's son, Paul Louis Audemars and Paul Edward Pigway were prepared to take over. Their generations of the new leaders and their offspring kept Audemars Pigway at the cutting edge of watchmaking innovation. Jasmine Audemars, Jules Audemars' great-granddaughter, is in charge of the company and is responsible for its environmental policies. She manages the operation of the Audemars Pigway Foundation in her capacity as president of the Audemars Pigway Board of Directors. Olivier Audemars, the great-grandson of Eddie Pigway, is also very attached to the company, and Françoise Benahmias is currently serving as the CEO of the company. It takes time to make time as seen in the century-long history of Audemars Pigway. Each watch resembles a certain period in the company's history. Its extensive history, consistent performance, and innovative spirit provide hope for many more chapters to come. That's it for the day, guys. Thank you for watching the story of the man behind Audemars Pigway. Make sure you like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If you learned something new today, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.